now it's time for the only show that doesn't care about ratings, Witness Radio, with your host, Ryan Muniak. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new year with Witness Radio. We still don't care about ratings because our sole purpose is to save souls. On purpose. Make sure to like us on Facebook and download previous episodes at witnesstalkradio.org. With it being a new year, many people are making resolutions. Maybe you're one of them. But are those resolutions self-focused, or are they focused on glorifying God? Here's the top five New Year's resolutions from the world. Exercise or lose weight, eat less. Uh, Number two, less debt or save money. Number three, better job and better education. Number four, stop bad habits. Number five, help others or volunteer. Now, those all sound like good resolutions, but the problem with the world's resolutions is that they're selfish. It's all about you. Even volunteering is about you from a worldly mindset because doing nice things for others will make you feel good. Now, here's five resolutions that will bring glory to our Lord. Exercise, eat more. Now, when I say that, I'm not talking about physical food. I'm talking about spiritual food. Read the Word of God, the Bible, more often. Exercise your spirit, your soul. Number two, give more. Tithe more. Uh, Donate more money and time to other ministries. There are so many ministries out there that uh, need your support, need your help. And you can do that. You can help them. And give glory to God at the same time. Number three, be better at your current job. You know, instead of trying to focus on getting a better job, why not focus on doing a great job at your current employer? Be above reproach and be a great employee. Number four, repent. Don't just stop bad habits, but turn from your sin and follow Christ. If you're following Christ, doing what He does, what He wants you to do, the bad habits automatically stop. Number five, share your faith. Instead of helping others and volunteering nice qualities, sharing your faith is more important because that's the best help for anyone, for everyone. There's nothing more important than escaping hell and entering heaven. So five resolutions that will bring glory to our Lord Jesus. You're listening to Witness Radio. Do you consider yourself to be a good person? I like to think so, yeah. Uh, I'm going to put you through a quick test, Akeem, okay? All right. Uh, Four questions. We'll go three because that's how many fingers I actually put up. Uh, So three questions. Uh, How many lies have you told in your whole life? I really don't know. Rough estimate. Uh, like count them like my whole entire. I don't know. I, I'm gonna go like just off the top 100. Okay. okay. None major though. None major. Like I kill someone or something. It's just like you know, just you know. Did you do your homework? Yes. And I didn't. Like stuff like that. Okay. Little white lies. But, but you have told lies. Yeah. Okay. And and we're not racist. We don't care about the color of the lie. All right. That that was supposed to be like a joke. Oh okay. <laughs> So, anyway, uh, next one. Have you ever stolen anything, even something small? Yeah. And uh, have you ever used uh, the name of God, Jesus Christ, or God, as a curse word? Like? O-J-C or O-M-I-G-O-D. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, uh, Akeem, I've just gone through the good person test. It's based on the Ten Commandments, okay? Okay. And you've admitted to me that you're guilty of lying, stealing, and using God's name in vain. So, in God's eyes, because you've broken those three of the Ten Commandments, you're a lying, thieving blasphemer. Okay. So, you're not a good person. 
you're, 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 you've broken his laws. So do you think God would consider you to be innocent or guilty? Uh, I guess what you just told me, I would be guilty. Do you think God should send you to heaven or to hell based on your guilty verdict? Well, what everybody, you know what they say in the Bible, I guess I'm going to hell. Does that concern you, Akeem? Not really. Why not? Because you can repent. And, like, people do it all the time. Murderers repent. And I don't know where they go, but, you know, they repent on their sins and all that good stuff. So, so what does repent mean? You know, you give your life. You know, you say you're sorry for the sins that you've done. You know. Let's try that in a courtroom real quick, okay? So, uh, say you're guilty of breaking a, a major law. Like, you murdered somebody. And you, you're standing before the judge judge says you're guilty what do you have to say for yourself i'm sorry judge should he let you go free no it depends on a crime i don't know like if i kill someone and i, I really don't know let, let's try it it uh, doesn't work like that let's try a different crime All right. okay uh judge says you're guilty of uh speeding you're, you're in here to pay a speeding ticket but you're trying to fight it you and we know you're guilty what, what do you have to say for yourself? I'm sorry. Does, does he let you go free, or do you still have to pay the fine? I mean, I still got to pay the fine, so. Okay, so doesn't I'm matter. Sorry, but I still pay the fine. Okay, so just saying you're sorry isn't going to help you. You're right. Okay. So there's got to be something else, something more. Do you have any idea what what could help your case? With the speeding ticket? With you being guilty before God? Mm, I don't know. Go to church. No, that won't help you either. Try that in a court of law. I'm, I'm confused. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know. Okay. Uh, I judge, I'm guilty, but I go to church. So you should let me go free. Is the judge going to let, let you go free for going to church or feeding the homeless or anything like that? No. Okay, so listen. God did something for you so that you could escape hell. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to this earth, born of a virgin. He was God in the flesh. And he lived a perfect, sinless life. But then he died on the cross. He was punished and whipped and kicked and bruised. Uh, not because he deserved it, but because you deserve it. See, when he was put on that cross and died on that cross, he was taking your place. He was paying the punishment, or he was taking the punishment that you deserve and that I deserve. Um, and then three days later, he rose from the grave, defeating death and hell. So now... Let me transfer that back to the courtroom real quick to help you understand what that really means, okay? Right. You're guilty before the judge. And he says you can pay a million dollar fine or rot in jail. Do you have a million dollars to pay? I do not. Neither do I. Guess I'm rotting in jail then, huh? Right. Well, just before the judge slams the gavel down, someone you don't even know comes in to the courtroom, lays the fine, the money, on, on, the, on the bench before the judge says judge I would like to pay his fine so now the judge seeing that the fine is is there it's it's able to be paid he says you have a choice Akeem do you want to accept this payment on your behalf and go free or do you want to do things yourself and still rot in jail I, mean, I would rather have that you know take the money yeah yeah well that's what Jesus did on the cross he paid your fine with his blood that's how important it is to God that, that you be, um, <clears throat> he loves you enough that he sent his own son to die in your place. And he says that if you want to accept that gift, that payment, you need to repent, which isn't just to, me, just to say you're sorry, but it's to actually turn your heart away from the sins that you commit, that you love to do like lying or stealing or using God's name in vain or many other things. Um, lust is, is a big one. Um, you know, looking at people with uh, sexual desire. Yeah, I, have I have a question. Is, okay. this, is this about the, uh, the case or about Jesus and God and all that good stuff? Cause I'm, I'm starting to feel like this is about God. This is about God. Well, it, it's a little bit about both, actually. Which one is it more or leaning to? Is it leaning towards God or like this? Well, um, at the moment, I'm talking about God. Okay. 
but I will be talking about the case again in just a moment. Okay? All right. So listen. Jesus paid your fine. And he says if you turn away from your sin and put your trust, not just believe in him, but put your trust in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross, you can be set free from hell. Not only that, but you can have eternal life. God will give you a new heart with new desires. You'll no longer desire to sin, to do the things that are wrong, but you'll desire to do the will of God. <clears throat> and you will have eternal life. You will be forgiven of all your sins, past, present, and future. Knowing that Jesus paid your fine with his blood, knowing that that payment is there, ready for you to accept or reject, what do you say? Do you say? Do you accept it? Do you reject it? I have accepted. You have accepted it. Okay. Uh, how how have you accepted that gift? I went to church and they had like the service and they said, "Is there anyone that willing to give their life to Christ?" And this this was back like in eighth grade and I got up and me and some other people and we went in a room and they told us this, like we just like repeated what she told us to say and then that was a process. So yeah. So now. Do you, do you remember anything about that prayer? Not really, no. I, we had to, like, say Jesus Christ is, like, our Savior, and, yeah. I can't really recall, but... Well, l let me tell you that um, just saying a prayer isn't going to save you, okay? The, the words that she had you repeat, that isn't going to save you. Don't, don't trust in what you did in eighth grade. Don't trust the prayer. Put your trust in Jesus, okay? Trust your life to him. Surrender your life to him. I'm not asking you to say a prayer to follow me, to bow your head and raise your hand or anything like that. I'm asking you to give your life to Jesus Christ before it's too late, before you die and before you go to hell, okay? Because from, from, from some of the comments, I, I, I don't think, uh, I, I think there's question uh, cause to question your your salvation, okay? And I I want to make sure that you're right with God. The Bible says to examine yourself to see if you're in the faith, okay? So make sure that you do that. Um, one last question: Do you, do you have a, a Bible? I do not. You do not. If uh, if I gave you one, would you read it? Probably not. Why is that? I have no interest in reading it. Well, th that further. Uh, confirms my suspicions, but I'll, I'll let you go. Akeem seemed like a nice guy, but that'll do him no good on Judgment Day. The conversation had started with a discussion about the situation in Ferguson, Missouri, and transitioned to the gospel. Now, Akeem noticed the transition during the interview, but I didn't let that stop me, because where he spends eternity is so important. This young man, unfortunately, is another example of bad fruit from churches in America. He had no desire for God or his word, yet probably thinks he'll go to heaven when he dies, because one time he repeated some prayer. A prayer that meant nothing then, and still means nothing today. If your salvation experience hinges on an unbiblical altar call, please examine yourself in light of scripture, and make sure that you are right with God. Do it now. Stop the show, turn to the book of 1 John, and examine yourself. Nothing is more important than where you'll spend eternity. This is Jennifer at Slippery Rock Campus. How cold is it out here today? 12 degrees, apparently. And you're willing to talk to me. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, do you believe in God? Yeah, actually, yeah. All right, and what God do you believe in? Well, I was raised Lutheran. Um, so I believe the one God, the Holy Trinity, um, essentially sent his son, uh, died for us. I don't know. I feel like I grew up with it. It's really hard discussing it with people when I'm like, it's kind of just like a part of your life, I guess. So... It's an interesting when someone actually asks you if you like what God. No, that's cool. So let me ask you a question. I have a knife in my back. I have three minutes to live. Yeah. How do I get to heaven? Oh, that is, yeah. 
Um, I feel like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I just feel like I'm going to answer wrong, but like if I, if I felt I had to answer, it'd probably be just in general being a good person. Like, I, if people are like, well, what is a good person? But I just I'm try to be nice to everyone because you never know what they're, what's going on, on, on in their lives. Accepting people, I guess. Are you so, are you a good person? No, not fully. Like, I know I'm not. I mean, I know I try, but I know I'm not. Have you ever told a lie? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Have you ever stolen anything? Yeah, yeah. I won't say, like, big things, but, like, yeah, it's happened. Have you ever um, hated someone? No. No. I would say no, not fully. That's good. The Bible says if you hate someone, you murder them in your heart. If you lust after a person, you commit adultery in your heart. So if God judged you by the Ten Commandments, would you be innocent or guilty? Oh, totally guilty. I know I'm not. I know I'm never going to be able to live up to that. So if you're guilty, would you go to heaven or hell? Well, if everything I have been believing my entire life is true, I would still go to heaven because he, he gave us a gift. He gave us a gift of mercy. And it's not something we can live up to, but it's something given to us anyway. Now that gift of mercy, that's Jesus dying on the cross to pay your fine, right? And you have to turn away from your sin and trust that Jesus paid that fine. Is that true? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, 100%. All right, so then it doesn't sound like it's being a good person that gets you into heaven, does it? I guess not. <laughs> it's, it's trying, but it's nothing you can actually do. Yeah, so it's like actually trusting that Jesus paid the fine. Mm -hmm. All right, so when I run, if I had ran into somebody who had a knife in their back and three minutes to live, I would say, here's the deal. When you die, God's going to judge you by the Ten Commandments. You know, have you lied? Have you stolen? Have you lusted? You've broken those laws. And so God is rich in mercy in his son Jesus to die on that cross to pay your fine. And so you have to repent, turn from your sin, and trust he paid that fine. Then you go to heaven not because you're a good person, not because you earned it or deserved it, because he loved you so much. And then Jesus rose from the grave three days later. What do you think about that? Pretty cool. Would you like to learn how to share your faith like that? Maybe not with a knife, but yeah. <laughs> so you, you're not you're unwilling to stab people to share the gospel with them. <laughs> that's, that's kind of intense. I'm, I'm pretty sure we're not like that's not a good idea. No, I agree. That's just funny. It was just one of those random thoughts. But uh, <laughs> not to go to jail. <laughs> yeah, not to, not going to jail is is, is my plan too. So uh, I am a uh, campus leader here at Slippery Rock, and I am training people up to share their faith. Imagine Jesus walking onto your local college campus. What would he say? Would he be like Matthew chapter 9, seeing the people harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd? And say, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. At Christian Collegiate Network, we are sending workers into the harvest. We are training students how to proclaim the glorious gospel, not only in the way that they live their lives, but how to speak to the campus community about the gospel. If you want to support our ministry at Christian Collegiate Network by becoming a campus leader or financially, go to changeyourcampus.com. Christian Collegiate Network, changeyourcampus.com. I praise God for Jennifer and all the CCN missionaries because they're going on to college campuses to reach the lost and disciple the found. This girl didn't know how to share her faith. In fact, she didn't even know how to talk about her faith. Hopefully, she'll get integrated into the CCN Bible study at Slippery Rock University this semester. As Christians, we need to know what we believe, why we believe it, and how to share it with others. Remember what 1 Peter 3.15 says, But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. So don't just live your faith, but know it and share it. Ratings. We don't need no stupid ratings. You're listening to Witness Radio with Ryan Muriak. <coughs> but we like Ryan. <coughs> We do! 
just go to witnesstalkradio.org. If you haven't started yet, I want to encourage you all to start a Bible reading plan. Choose one that will have you get through the whole Bible by the end of the year. There's many to choose from, and when you finish this year's plan, you can choose another one for next year. I just finished a chronological plan, and I'm currently working on a plan that has me reading a little from the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Psalms, and Proverbs every day. Using a progress sheet or Bible app can also encourage you to keep going throughout the year. Whatever you choose to do, just make sure you're reading your Bible every day. It's food for your soul. Do you believe in God? Um, yes I do. And what God do you believe in? I believe in uh, the Christian God, Jesus. Okay, and uh, how, why do people go to hell? I actually don't believe in hell, but I do believe in God. And do you think God is a good God? Yes, I do. Do you think he's a just God? Um, yeah, I do. So if God's just, shouldn't he punish those people that did bad things? Um, I don't even know how to answer this. Yeah, I he should, but um, I don't think he would send anyone to a place that is like hell. So when Jesus talks about going to a place of gnashing of teeth, and he t- like an eternal you know, gnashing of teeth, what's he talking about? I've never actually heard that before. Well, you know, like when he talks about, you know, he talks about like the 10 virgins and then those who don't go in, you know, they're they're outside where there's gnashing of teeth. If you do read the Bible often? No, I don't. All right. So the Bible, Jesus actually talks about hell actually more than heaven. Um, In, I believe it's Luke 16, he talks about um, a Lazarus and a rich man and the rich man ends up in hell and Lazarus ends up in heaven. Have you ever read that one? No. And so what happens is that Lazarus has is this rich there there's a rich man and and he he does he he doesn't feed the uh, poor Lazarus and then he ends up down in in hell and he looks up and sees Lazarus he says he says to uh, Moses he says Moses you know just send Lazarus down here to give me like one drop of water and and Moses tells him there's no way oh it's Abraham I'm so sorry it's Abraham and he says you know there's no no way to get from here to there from there to here and so. It turns out that God's a just God. He says that it's called for a man once to die and then the judgment. And so should murderers, you know, should murderers be punished? Um, yeah, but I don't think they go to hell. I don't, I feel like there's one place that we all go and um, some people have it good and some people don't. And that's just how it is. And where do you get your information from? That's just what I believe. Well, I mean, shouldn't what you believe make? Sh- wouldn't you want to make sure that it's true? No, it's just my opinion. That's just what I feel. I haven't got that from anyone. So, if you when you die, the Bible says that you will stand before God. And so, have you ever told a lie? Yes. Have you ever stolen anything? No. The Bible says if you hate someone, you murder them in your heart. If you lust after a person, you commit adultery in your heart. Do you think you've ever done either of those? Probably, yeah. If God judged you by the Ten Commandments, do you think you'd be innocent or guilty? Guilty. If you're guilty, would you go to heaven or hell? I don't believe in heaven or hell. I don't believe we go anywhere like that. Well, I mean, just because you don't believe that they are not there, the Bible actually says that they are there. And so I, I know that you said that you're, you've said you're a Christian, but... To be Christian, you, you have to believe what the Bible says. So, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and cast out demons in your name, and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me you workers of lawlessness. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. We're seeing more and more people profess a belief in Jesus, but less and less people have the right Jesus. If your idea of who Jesus is doesn't match the description of him in the Bible, 
then you've got an imposter, an imitation, a fake Jesus. Make sure you've trusted in the real deal. You're listening to When This Radio. Would you consider yourself to be a good person? Yes. Have you ever told a lie? Yes. Have you ever stolen anything? Yes. The Bible says if you hate someone, you murdered them in your heart. And if you lust after a person, you commit adultery in your heart. Do you think you've ever done either of those? No. If God judged you by the Ten Commandments, would you be innocent or guilty? Innocent. How come? Um, I believe in my heart that I'm a good person and that my intentions are usually always good. Okay. Have you ever taken God's name in vain? No. You never said, oh, my G-O-D or O-J-C? No. Have you, do you go to church every week? No. Do you, uh, do you, do you believe in God? Do you believe like in the one true God? Yes. But you don't go to church and honor him every week? Not every week. Now, do you know how people get to heaven? Yes. How do they get to heaven? Well, first you go through the path of purgatory. You go through the uh, trials. Get to heaven. The Bible says that uh, all have fallen short of the glory of God. And they say that everyone has broken God's law and, and sinned. What do you think about that? It's true. So then that means that you have sinned, right? Absolutely. So if you sinned and you stand before God... Wouldn't you be guilty of breaking his laws? Yes. So if you're guilty, would you go to heaven or hell? I believe in forgiveness. I believe I go to heaven. What is it that allows someone to forgive you? It allows God to forgive you. Do you know what it is that pays the fine? Uh, grace. It's actually that God sent his son Jesus that lived a perfect life. And when he died on that cross, that's him paying the fine for all the things you did. So every time you lied, stolen, lusted, hated, that's him paying that fine for you. Have you ever heard that before? Yes. And so if God paid that fine in full, you would go to heaven, not because you earned it or deserved it. You would just go straight to heaven. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you would just go straight to heaven, do you think there's a need for purgatory then? Uh, yeah. What for? I mean, if Jesus paid the fine in full, like if you're sitting before the judge and someone pays your fine, you get to go free, wouldn't you? Well, yes, but it's not just that simple. God isn't about the judge and the jury. God is the judge and jury. The Bible says that, that God handed over the the judgment to Jesus. And that he, when we, we stand before him, it's called for him at once to die and then the judgment. And so he is going to judge us. God is so... So um, just that the only way people get to heaven is that he poured out the wrath of God on his only son. That's how just he is, because that's the only way people get to heaven. What do you think about that? I think it's a pretty nice thing to do. It is. And so to get to heaven, we have to understand that we're not good people and we deserve hell and that Jesus paid that fine in full. And the Bible says we must repent, turn from our sin and trust that he paid that fine. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Thanks for listening to another episode of Witness Radio. And until next time, the fields are ripe for the harvest. So what are you waiting for? Get out there and share your faith. May God bless you. Radio has been brought to you by the Muniac family.